<clears throat> well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so very happy to be here today with all of you here in the wonderful community of Brampton uh, to be joined uh, to be joined by two very special guests uh, here this morning at the podium. And in particular, I want to say to Marilyn to Jeffrey, thank you so much for being here uh, and for providing such exemplary leadership for this community, for this wonderful community of Brampton. My neighbor, just to the west, as a proud resident myself of the GTA of the 905 from Woodbridge, I've had the chance over the last four years to spend a lot of time in Brampton, and this community is growing rapidly, and it continues to have needs, whether we're talking about transit and transportation infrastructure, or healthcare, or post-secondary, or in this case, talking about investments that governments are making in partnership with the private sector to create, uh, to create lots of new jobs. It's really fantastic to see all of the progress that's taken place here in Brampton. And I've said this many times over the last four years, we wouldn't collectively be in the strong position that we are in today here in the GTHA and across Ontario if it wasn't for outstanding municipal leaders like Mayor Linda Jeffrey. She's a very dear friend of mine and the people of Brampton are extremely lucky to have her as their municipal leader, as their mayor and as their champion. And I want to thank Linda Jeffrey publicly for being a great partner and a great leader here in Brampton. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, so I'm, I'm here today to make a very important announcement, and it's, uh, it's a really exciting one for me in particular uh, because I currently serve as Ontario's Minister of Economic Development and Growth, but of course for a couple of years I served previously as Minister of Transportation. And today we're here to talk about something that's very exciting that demonstrates the tremendous progress that we've made, but it kind of mixes in a really positive way those two responsibilities, transportation and economic development and growth. And of course, I am here today, not only on behalf of our government, but also on behalf of my very dear friend, our current Minister of Transportation, Catherine McGarry. I wanna thank everyone who's here today, and I wanna thank all of you for the extraordinary work that you do on a day in, day out basis. And I can see a number of members of the team from Metrolinx, people I worked with closely through about three years, 207 days, but who's counting, right, Jerry? Okay, so I wanna thank everyone for the work that's been uh, taken or that's been uh, that's been underway and continues to be there's a lot of passion here in this community there's a lot of hard work in this community and collectively you've all you've all gotten us to the point at which we are today of course I want to thank in addition to the Metrolinx team our partners at Alstom uh, for the extraordinary leadership and the work uh, that's uh, that's taking place again we wouldn't be in the strong position that we are in today if it wasn't for the great partnerships that we have so today Today, I think we're starting something that's pretty amazing. This is where the vehicles will be assembled that will help to carry our regional transit system into a new era, not just a new era, but an exciting era. The state-of-the-art light rail vehicles will be that will be built here will be deployed on new LRT lines like Finch West and here Ontario in Mississauga. They're part of our government's absolute and unwavering commitment to regional rail and to helping people move more effectively, more efficiently, and more safely across this region. But they're also part of our commitment and our strong belief in the importance of public transit for our growing communities. It's an investment that we're talking about, when you look at the big picture, of about $50 billion over the next 25 years. It's a plan that will ultimately help connect multiple train and subway lines and move thousands and thousands of hardworking women and men across the greater Toronto and Hamilton area every single day, and as I mentioned, more quickly and more efficiently. This is good news. It's good news for the people that we're proud to represent. It's good news for those who use public transit on a daily basis, and it's good news for those who use our highways. Because when you have a seamless and integrated transit network that move, and transportation network that helps to move people and goods more effectively, it helps to improve two things. One, it helps to support that strong and vibrant and prosperous economy that we need in order to help with the second thing, which is to improve the quality of life for the people that we're extremely proud to represent. But these trains, these vehicles, they also mean jobs, good jobs. Between 100 and 120 new jobs right here at this facility, and from what I understand, another four to 500 spin-off jobs elsewhere. This is part of an important and bigger picture. Let's not forget, because I'm often fond of saying that it's important for us to celebrate our successes. And here in Ontario, 
we have many to celebrate. Since the depths of the economic recession about 10 years ago in 2008, the people of our province have helped to create more than 800,000 new jobs. Good jobs. Most of these in the private sector. Most of these full time. And most of these in industries with above average wages. Last year on average, we created 500 jobs every single day. And Ontario has the lowest unemployment rate in 17 years. We've been below the national average of unemployment for the last 35 consecutive months. This is worth celebrating. Today's announcement is another important step in the right direction. A big win for Brampton, a big win for the greater Toronto and Hamilton area, and fundamentally, a big win for the province of Ontario. We need to keep that momentum going. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, is not the time to risk all of this progress, all of these jobs, with bumper sticker economics and soundbite solutions. We've come too far. We've made too much progress to put it all at risk. We've accomplished so much in public transit, in economic development and job creation, to take our wonderful province backwards. We can't afford to let that happen. So once again, I want to congratulate the Alstom team. I want to congratulate Mayor Linda Jeffrey, and of course, my dear friends at Metrolinx for the extraordinary work they do each and every day. Thank you all for making sure that our province continues to move forward. And now I'm going to turn things over to Mayor Linda Jeffrey. So good morning, everybody, and it is a good morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, Minister uh, Del Duca for coming. And uh, you and I have spent a lot of time together over the last three years making announcements, and I appreciate that this morning is a lot warmer than the last uh, announcement <laughs> we made. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, your advocacy in making sure that uh, so much provincial money comes to Brampton. Thank you very much. You're, you're like my special advocate at the province. And it's always great to meet with our provincial partners and local businesses. And this morning, I'm really pleased to be here because it's about job creation. And I'm delighted to be here to welcome Alistair and say thank you for choosing Brampton for your new site. You will find that Brampton has an exceptionally skilled workforce and, he and hearing that this new site will create up to 140 jobs and beyond in the spin-off is wonderful news. Thank you for choosing Brampton. And I don't know how much you know about us, but we're certainly on track to become a global leader in innovation and technology. And having companies like Alistair, you're another company that I can brag about and join our, during our city and allows us to create other opportunities and good jobs for our residents. More and more businesses are choosing to call uh, Brampton home and our city is growing rapidly and our workforce is comp comprised of highly skilled professionals. We want our, our skilled residents to have an opportunity to work in their own city. And we, uh, we appreciate uh, the um, courage it takes for businesses to expand and to, to make that leap of faith into a community they don't have experience with. But I assure you, our door is open. We want to make sure that you are successful. Uh, we appreciate the confidence that the province of Ontario has shown in supporting the work that Brampton is doing. Transit uh, is something that helps elevate and uh, improve the quality of life for all residents. And certainly, uh, I am very pleased, very grateful that the province of Ontario has uh, decided to make this investment. So thank you, Alistair, for choosing Brampton. Thank you, Minister Del Duca, for your um, kind words at the beginning, but we certainly appreciate that you've been in the trenches fighting for better transit across the province of Ontario, and certainly now in your new role in fighting for investment and jobs uh, in cities like Brampton. That makes a huge difference and it changes the quality of life. So thank you both thank you. for uh, your confidence in the city of Brampton. Uh, we won't let you down. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you to the team from Metrolinx. Uh, we are really pleased to be part of this uh, adventure. It's, uh, it's been a journey for us, and um, we really appreciate being here and having this opportunity. We, we're here to celebrate the retrofit of this uh, facility where Alstom will assemble the Citadel Spirit vehicles for Metrolinx. 
This facility is Alstom's second industrial site in Ontario and will be the second site where we assemble the design for North America City of the Spirit. It is a testament to the uh, importance of public transport in the province and the Ontario government's commitment to make the lives of commuters a little easier with greater and improved service. Despite the persistent unseasonable cold weather that we're going through here, and I, uh, I uh, recognize the courage of the minister here, not wearing a coat, <laughs> Ontario's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ontarians can be assured that the Alstom City of the Spirit um, will be here and ready for them to basically commute back and forth to work, to school, and to their appointment, regardless of the weather conditions. We are extremely proud that Alstom will assemble these vehicles for the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area here in Brampton using local resources and local talents. We are equally proud of our track record in Ontario. The recently launched communication-based uh, train control and signaling system behind the York uh, Spadina subway extension is a recent example. This achievement wouldn't be possible without the exceptional team from Alstom, which is right here in, uh, in Toronto. We look forward to adding over 100 more members to our team Rest assured, the, Ontario, uh, the Alstom team will deliver a quality product coming from this facility. Thank you. Happy to take questions, if there are any. Can you tell me if there's any uh, deadlines for the delivery of the vehicle and if uh, those deadlines uh, include any uh, Penalties if they're not it's not fair to ask me a transportation question now that I'm on economic development and growth, but I'll see if I can recall uh, from, uh, from my previous responsibility, and I'm going to look out into the audience seeing friends from Metrolinx. I seem to recall that Finch is 2021, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Jerry, am I right? Am I wrong? 2022, Jerry Shapu is telling me. So uh, again, the vehicles that will be assembled here, I think it's a total of 61 currently ordered, uh, right? 61 currently ordered. So for Finch and for here, Ontario, I think one is 2021, one is 2022, but Jerry Shapu, who's right there, who's coaching me from the audience very well, will be happy to provide all those details to you. Uh, but like all, like all contracts that the government of Ontario or the team at Metrolinx would enter into, uh, there would be a series of provisions to make sure that our suppliers, all of our contracting partners, uh, are, uh, are, uh, are held to their contractual obligations. And uh, as was pointed out, Alstom has a really strong track record here in the province of Ontario, for those who don't know. For example, already in the city of Ottawa with the LRT project there, of, uh, of demonstrating to our government that they do have the capacity to build and assemble the kind of vehicle that's required for our climate and for our transportation system. So we have every confidence that they will perform as per the contract, and we look forward to the partnership continuing to flourish. All right. Seeing no other questions, thank you very much, everyone, and congratulations again. It's a great day.